Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective, going to 5,000 subscribers, September 7th, Texas LSU, can't wait. Tonight we're going to get back to boxing as Andy Ruiz Jr. shocks the world against Anthony Joshua, defeating him, TKO, seventh round. The referee decides that Anthony Joshua has had enough. Uh, we'll get to, into the stoppage. Anthony Joshua was on, actually hit the ground four times in this fight. Uh, it was it a was very, very interesting bout. Coming into the fight, you know, I did some prep with, in regards to Andy Ruiz just in terms of um, some YouTube videos. I had not seen him fight, you know, in terms of uh, watching a, a live bout of his before. Uh, especially since he was filling in for Jarrell Miller, who obviously failed the drug test. And, uh, you know, last minute fill in, Andy Ruiz having fought as recently as April. And, you know, many of us, many in the boxing world, thought this was going to be a fight that Anthony Joshua should have no issues with. First fight on U.S. soil and, you know, getting to the next phase of whether it's dealing with Wilder, Fury, and, and the whole muck of the heavyweight division. Andy Ruiz had under other plans, and good for him. Uh, you'll, you'll hear the jokes about his uh, appearance. Uh, let this be a lesson. Don't never judge a book by a cover. You know, we hear that all the time, but especially that analogy in relationship to sports. But, you know, rarely do you see it play out the way it did, you know, in this regard. Now, I will say this, and I was telling a brother this at work, when we were having the conversation about the fight and, and, you know, it was Friday and end of the day. And I was like, you know, just even looking at Ruiz on tape, you know, he's got real quick hands. He's good with some counters. You know, I think he could present, you know, I don't think this is going to be a pushover. And I had no idea and, and, and never thought in a million years he would uh, dominate Anthony Joshua the way he did tonight. This was not uh, uh, Hasim Rahman catching with a with a lucky punch. No disrespect to that him, but... This was, you know, really from the third round on. Um, now we can go into Anthony Joshua, his camp, his conditioning, because fatigue definitely was an issue. Uh, you saw that even with, you know, how, hey, open mouth breathing, mouthpiece coming out the whole bit. Um, but from a from a technical standpoint, um, Andy Ruiz capitalized on a lot of things, a lot of mistakes that I noticed from Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua having, you know, being six foot seven, having a five to six inch uh, length advantage over Ruiz, uh, as well as his wingspan, not utilizing his jab effectively, especially against a guy who in Ruiz who's stepping forward very, very aggressive. Um, in the manner in which Ruiz fought, and it paid off for him tremendously. Um, but but you know, when we, especially when you think of the the, the very good British heavyweights uh, like a Tyson Fury, or even going back to Lennox Lewis, they've always utilized their jab very very effectively, especially against fighters like this who try to close the gap and eliminate the space uh, to get in and, and get to the body and ultimately land effective shots going upstairs to the head. Anthony Joshua. Again, I I don't know if it was fatigue. I don't know if it was after he thought the fight should have been over after he, he landed a beautiful left hook on, on Ruiz in the third round, had him on the canvas, and then all of a sudden, you know, Ruiz wakes up and gets stronger like the damn Hulk where he's absorbing, you know, the, the blows and just able to get stronger and immediately, I don't know, adrenaline rush and, and gets a, a knockdown on Joshua to the point where the second knockdown in the third round, you could argue that, you know, the referee could have stopped it there because he did not respond to the instructions in coming forward. Luckily, the bell rings and, you know, Joshua in his corner try to regroup. Um, the other thing that that irked, that not irked me because I'm, it's not like I was rooting for Joshua, but I will get into more big picture questions uh, from a boxing perspective here in a little bit. But one of the things that I thought was interesting, and I always notice this in these fights, is when a fighter is in trouble to the point where they take a knockdown. You got to use the count to your advantage. And Tyson Fury actually did this really, really well, where he really took his time before getting to your feet with the blood rushes back to your head and whatnot. And I, I'm not, I'm no, you know, scientist or, or, or understanding the body, but I do know when you're woozy or whatever, sometimes it does help you to just take that knee 
or to just utilize the count. And then around seven or eight, get back to your feet and respond to the referee's instructions. They will uh, uh, work with you on the count. But on the first knockdown, Anthony Joshua jumps up, like almost like a pride thing. Like, oh, you, you know, I don't, I don't know why not just taking at least an eight count on the ground and then standing up and and responding and almost utilizing that time to 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 regroup even in those moments. And maybe that's just, hey, you know, I'm in shock. And there's probably so many things going through Anthony Joshua's mind, like, oh my God, I'm screwed. I'm I'm trying to, you know, coming into this fight, I was trying to keep up with what Wilder did with Brazil. And by the way, I'm sorry I didn't make a reaction video of that fight. Shame on me. I was in a place where I didn't have my equipment. Didn't re respond to that hellacious knockout on the part of Deontay Wilder. But uh, getting back to Joshua, I think part of it is just he's in shock. And then it's like going from trying to impress to survival mode in a matter of, of what, 30 minutes at that point. And I think all of that just overwhelms you to the point where now you're in danger and, and you can't survive. And he's making mistakes. And Ruiz is, you know, let's give Andy Ruiz a ton of credit here. By the way, first Mexican heavyweight champion uh, of the world. And, and, you know, well done, sir. <laughs> well done. I mean, we, we have uh, Anthony Joshua who's, you know, you could argue on the level of some of our, our biggest athletes over in the UK, and he comes over here and gets sparked by Gabriel Iglesias. You know, it's just that's that's what we just saw. And But Gabriel Iglesias with, you know, fluffy hand hands, because this, this brother Ruiz, his hand speed, absolutely impressive. Um, him understanding how to fight a bigger fighter, him coming forward, uh, and, and that requires good footwork, which I thought Ruiz had excellent footwork, uh, even with the feints and whatnot. So lots and lots of credit to Ruiz. Also having the stamina after fighting from, you know, just a month ago and, and, and being in, in good enough shape. I know it doesn't look like that on his body, but, you know, you didn't see him breathing out of his mouth. He responded well when he was knocked down himself in the third round. Uh, never seen gas the way Joshua seen gas. And I know Joshua has the body of an Adonis, but, you know, when you're seeing somebody breathe out of their mouth, when you're seeing him not keep his hands up and he's getting caught with shots and his hands are still down, not utilizing that jab, they uh, the announcers noted the lack of punch count activity. You know, normally around 40, 50 punches around. Now you're down in the 20s. A lot of that is fatigue, and there's also your guys are getting hurt. This guy's hitting you with blows. Not only does he have good hand speed, he have very, very good. He showed very good power um, in, in an array of punches, uh, left hand and right hand. So, where now the the question here are the questions I have: Is this good for boxing? Because we prolonged this whole Wilder Joshua thing, and the buildup was there, and and and, that, and I made a video. Probably over well over a year ago when it was first announced that Wilder would fight Joshua, you know, obviously things went apart, went their separate ways. Ghost, both guys carry an undefeated record. Wilder almost loses Tyson Fury, but it's good because Tyson Fury is also a star. We built up another heavyweight. But I've always thought, like, with in boxing, you're always one punch away from ruining a potential great fight, and. Is, is is Joshua tarnished now? What And please chime in. What are your opinions of Anthony Joshua moving forward after this fight? He's now, what, 22-1? and one? Uh, Still has a tremendous record. He's beaten a lot of good guys. But first fight on U.S. soil, and he gets sparked by Bartolo Colon. You know, so it's like, you know, you, you see this brother out here. Now, is Andy Ruiz now a star? Is that somebody who... Not a star in the sense of like markability or anything like that, but a star in the sense of somebody now that's at, put his name in the heavyweight pie. Maybe more names is better. Um, and having losses isn't the worst thing in the world, historically in boxing it, within the heavyweight division, going back to the 70s in, in their heydays where you had the Ken Nortons and Joe Frazier's and George Foreman's and Muhammad Ali's, all those guys beat each other, right? So, um, you know. Just because you, you you take a loss or whatever doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's the end all be all from a uh, 
you know, from a competitive standpoint of the product. But I do worry about a sport where we're not where we were back then trying to get to, you know, the casual viewer landscape and and just really getting a footprint fr- footprint here with the stars that we have. Like Wilder is a, has ascended to become a big star, but he's also 34 years old. Um, and he has a tough slate coming up himself with Lu- the rematch with Luis Ortiz and now the rematch that they just announced against Tyson Fury. Um, and then Joshua loses. You know, now Ruiz and his funny Eddie Hearn jumps in there right away. And I'm sure it was contractual, but hey, we got to have this rematch over in the UK. I thought that was pretty funny as well. But at the end of the day, credit to Andy Ruiz and um, great, great story. Mexican Rocky coming up with the W. Um, you know, I know I've made a couple jokes about his appearance, but um, absolutely brilliant performance, brilliant hand speed, brilliant footwork, um, and, and most importantly, a ton of heart ton of heart on his behalf Anthony Joshua um, classic case of overconfident um, not keeping your eye on the ball not executing and I, I just don't see that same laser focus that Deontay Wilder has where he's you know able to motivate himself to the point of making these fights personal and really wanting to destroy his opponent uh, Anthony Joshua has to regroup and I think he did. I think he. I think he can. I think he will. He's young, super, super talented. Um, he had his moments tonight in this fight. It wasn't a total, you know, no show from him. Uh, but overall, he's got to. He's got to fix. Fix it. Him, Eddie Hearn, their whole camp. Got to get back in there and uh, try to try to rebuild this thing. And and maybe that's part of his redemption story as well. So. Y'all let me know in the comments how you feel. Uh, all my social media, social media links down there. So please follow. Appreciate you guys as always. Over and out.